An Alpass filter is a filter that has gain across all frequencies equal to 1. That means that no frequency component that passes through it gets boosted or attenuated. But what Alpass filter does is that it introduces a frequency dependent delays. So some frequency components are more delayed than others. This structure forms a basis for a huge number of audio applications. High pass, low pass, band pass, notch, shelving filters, parametric equalizers, phasers, reverberation, and much, much more. In this short video, I will share with you all you need to know about Alpass filter. Hi everyone, my name is Jan Wilczek from thewoolsound.com and if you're new to this channel, I teach you about sound processing using self-written software. Today we will learn about a structure that may very well be the most powerful tool in our digital signal processing arsenal, the Alpass filter. We'll define what is an Alpass filter, we'll show what are the types of Alpass filters and we'll uncover the reasons why it is so powerful. It is important to stress that we are focusing only on musically useful Alpass filters, so we'll be discussing real valued filters only. So, what exactly is an Alpass filter? An Alpass filter is a filter which does not change the magnitude of any frequency component that passes through it. So if we have its transfer function, then the magnitude of this transfer function across all frequencies will be 1. And here omega is 2 pi f over fs, where f is the frequency in hertz and fs is the sampling rate in hertz. If you don't know what a transfer function is, let's just say that this is a description of a filter in the frequency domain. Two general classes of Alpass filters are FIR, finite impulse response Alpass filters, and IIR, infinite impulse response Alpass filters. An FIR Alpass filter is simply a delay by K samples. All frequency components have the same phase delay, are delayed equally. In order not to change the magnitude of any frequency component, we can only multiply the output by 1 or minus 1. So the transfer function of the FIR Alpass filter is plus minus z to minus k. And here k cannot be smaller than 0. If you're interested about the delay, then I highly encourage you to check out my video on the topic. Delay is very useful. But when we're talking about Alpass filters, we're typically referring to IIR Alpass filter. Let us start with the first order IIR Alpass filter. Here we have its transfer function, and here its difference equation, and here its block diagram. As you can see, it consists of two comp filters. A feedforward comp filter sums A1 times V of N with V of N minus 1. A feedback comp filter subtracts A1 times V of N minus 1 from x of n to obtain v of n. It's such a powerful structure that I devoted much more space to its analysis in the article over at dwoolson.com. There you'll find a thorough analysis of the difference equation and also some implementational tips. And if you liked the video so far, don't hesitate to click the subscribe button and give me the thumbs up. Thank you so much means a lot to me. As we said, the magnitude transfer function of this filter is 1. Why do we need it then? Well, the power of the Alpass filter lies in its phase response. Phase response tells us what's the phase delay of each frequency component that passes through our Alpass filter. As you can see, this phase delay is 0 at DC or constant component, 0 Hz component, and it goes down to minus pi at the Nyquist frequency. And uh, minus pi means that the frequency component at the Nyquist frequency gets exactly inverted in phase, as if it were multiplied by minus 1. 
If you don't know what Nyquist frequency is, be sure to check out my video on something. You definitely remember the A1 coefficient from the transfer function of the first order Alpha's filter. This A1 coefficient controls what is called the break frequency of the Alpha's filter. In the context of the first order Alpha's filter, the break frequency denotes the frequency at which the phase delay is exactly minus pi over 2 radians. Here is the formula for the A1 coefficient. This formula is derived using the bilinear transform from the transfer function of the analog, so not digital, Alpha's filter. I will not explain the bilinear transform here, but if you're interested in it, I've included some references to great materials in the article over at dwilson.com. First order Alpha's filters already allow us to build flexible high-pass, low-pass and shelving filters, virtual analog emulations of a phaser, and certain reverberation algorithms. To recap, the first order IAR Alpha's filter has the following properties. The phase shift at the frequency of 0 Hz is 0 radians. The phase shift at the Nyquist frequency is minus pi radians. And the phase shift at the break frequency is exactly minus pi over 2 radians, and this break frequency can be controlled with the A1 coefficient. Now, let's discuss the even more powerful second order IAR Alpha's filter. The second order Alpha's filter has the following transfer function and the following difference equation, and the following block diagram. The C and D coefficients can again be derived using the bilinear transform, but this time they allow us to separately control the break frequency and the bandwidth, so the steepness of the phase response curve. To see how, let's examine the phase response of the second order Alpha's filter. On this plot, we can see phase responses of three second order Alpha's filters with the same bandwidth parameter but with different break frequencies. Note how now break frequency means the phase shift of minus pi, not minus pi over 2 radians as it was the case for the first order Alpha's filter. As you can see, regardless of the break frequency, the shape of the phase response curve is the same. This was not the case for the first order Alpha's filter. Now, if we change the bandwidth parameter while keeping the break frequency fixed, we can control how fast the phase response curve tends to minus 2 pi. For a very small value of the bandwidth parameter, we can obtain even a very steep slope. Now you should be able to see why the second order Alpha's filter is such a powerful structure because we can separately control the bandwidth, so the steepness of the phase response curve and the break frequency. This flexibility allows us to implement musically useful bandpass and notch filters and precise phase equalization. To recap, the properties of the second order IAR Alpha's filters are the following. The phase shift at 0 Hz is again 0. The phase shift at the Nyquist frequency is minus 2 pi. The phase shift at the break frequency is minus pi. And we can independently control the break frequency and the steepness of the phase response curve. Now you may wonder, are there even higher order Alpha's filters? Of course there are, but they aren't so musically useful and they are much more difficult to analyze. Thus, in practice, I have encountered only first and second order Alpha's filters. So now, you all set to use them too. You've learned everything you needed to learn about Alpha's filters. In summary, in this video you have learned all that is needed to use Alpha's filter in music software applications. You learned the definition of the Alpha's filter and the three most important types, the delay, the first order IAR Alpha's filter and the second order IAR Alpha's filter. 
you've learned that in the case of the first order Alpha's filter, we can control the brake frequency, but not the shape of the slope of the phase response. However, in the case of the second order Alpha's filter, we can control both. You're now ready to implement parametric equalizers, phasers, reverberation algorithms, and all other things that need Alpha's filters. As usual, I put an even more detailed description over at dwolfsound.com and I encourage you to check it out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up and turn on notifications. A big shout out to Alto Acoustics Lab for letting me record this video in their offices. They have just launched their own YouTube channel, so be sure to check it out as well. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.